Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to another edition of On the Clock with Personal Living Alert. I'm David, I'm with Personal Living Alert, and today we are, this is amazing, we've got Linda Goldfield, who's the Executive Director for the Parkinson's Association of Southwest Florida. And Linda's gonna to talk to us not only about Parkinson's, but about how nonprofits in general are handling the COVID-19. So good morning, Linda, and how are you today? Hi, David. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be on your show today. Uh, I'm, I'm doing, I'm sorry. I'm the one who's honored. <laughs> oh, thank you. Uh, I'm doing well. Our association is managing the best that we can in these uncertain times. While I, I say we are living in a COVID-19 pandemic, we've been living in a Parkinson's disease pandemic in our community as well. Uh, so the challenges that face our community are all the more challenging as we all are navigating the difficulties of this uh, pandemic in our community. Absolutely, I couldn't agree more. Before we go into too much uh, uh, of what you guys do at, at the Parkinson's Association, I always like to find out what's your background? How did you get involved with Parkinson's and things like that? So sadly, I lost both of my parents to neurodegenerative diseases. Uh, many people have heard this story. Uh, my father was misdiagnosed with Parkinson's disease, uh, went to some of the finest medical facilities in the country and couldn't get a definitive diagnosis and eventually was diagnosed correctly with uh, ALS. Uh, and uh, we saw him deteriorate and decline and that was a very progressive disease. Shortly after his death, my mother started to present with symptoms that she developed a form of Parkinson's disease. And while we had access, we were a well-educated family and had the financial means uh, to access programs and activities, I say that we are a family that didn't live well with this disease and that we thought we didn't need support, we didn't need resources. Uh, and several years later, after both of their passing, uh, I was been involved in the nonprofit community for close to 20 years here in Naples, Florida. I was approached to join the association. Uh, and I share honestly that at first I thought I really didn't want to relive these devastating diseases that my family went through. And I joined the association and found that I have been able to help people live well with this disease, uh, that no one should go through what my family went through. We are here to help people live the best possible life with Parkinson's disease and other neurodegenerative diseases. Uh, we offer close to, well, prior to uh, COVID-19, we offered close to 200 hours of programming to help people impacted by Parkinson's disease live well. Uh, and so my mission uh, and what brings me joy and is a privilege to serve as the executive director of this association is to help people live well with Parkinson's disease. Now I've done, and I'm sorry for your loss, but I've done a lot of these types of conversations. And it's always amazing to me how I, I would almost say like 90% of the people that are involved in the senior community, whether it is a home health aid or a vendor like myself, with the medical alerts or, or care managers or, or now with you, there's always a connection. Um, and that's why we get in it, you know, because it was a family member or somebody like that who had something and we felt that there was a need to give back and help and do that kind of thing. So. You know, it, it, I just always found that to be pretty interesting. Well, and I think it becomes our passion. So uh, again, I'll, I feel very grateful. I think a lot of people go to work every day and that's exactly what it is, work. This is my passion to, again, help people live well, to make sure they have access to the programs. And uh, we're here to advocate for them so that, again, they can live well. While it's my goal that one day there will be a cure and that we go out of business. Sadly, there is no cure in sight. And so until that cure is found, we're here to help people in our community live well. Uh, now, I know you have 
a lot of programs, right? I've been to your office, we've sat down before and we've talked and I, we actually participated in one of your events um, about a year ago now, it's called Feed the Plate or Fill the Plate, I should say. With but COVID-19, you can't do some of those services. So how are you changing and modifying and, and still helping people? So immediately we switched to virtual programming. So we now are offering close to 20 hours a week of virtual programming, whether it's movement classes or speech therapy, drumming, uh, we're uh, an education programming to help people live well while they are staying at home, uh, exercising social distancing. Uh, and so while overwhelmingly we have heard from our members how that it's been very helpful for them, unfortunately with Parkinson's disease, it's a disease that can create anxiety and depression and the isolation just exacerbates those symptoms. And so while people can be together in a virtual programming until we can return to in-person programming, that's what we've continued to do and continue to expand those services to help people in our community. Uh, now, we know that when we are able to go back to group activity, we will continue to offer virtual programming for those that still feel more comfortable staying at home or in fact for our members that go to another community who live uh, in a summer community that doesn't offer the depth of programming that we offer so they can remain engaged and active. So if you're unaware, the only activity that delays the progression of Parkinson's disease is movement and it's recommended that people with Parkinson's disease exercise two and a half hours a week and so they can stay engaged with our virtual programming. On the other note, though, what I think the struggle is for us as well as with other nonprofits is that we live in a community that is very special events focused, and none of us know when or if we'll be able to offer our special events. So for us, September 18th, we have bags and bingo scheduled, and then October, fill your plate. We're uncertain if we'll be able to offer the, hold those programs. Uh, if the uh, state doesn't allow larger groups together. So our, our primary focus and concern is that people stay healthy and safe uh, and balancing that with the needs to raise money because all of our programs that we offer in our community are free of charge. And while it costs us close to $200 per person per year to provide those services, we never want money to be an obstacle to participating in our programming. Uh, and the way that we're able to do that is through the generosity of our local community and through our fundraising events. So we are not part of a national organization. We don't receive any funding from any national organization, nor do we receive government funding. And it's through these special events that we're able to sustain and continue to expand programming to meet the growing needs of our community. That actually was right what I was gonna talk talk to you about next is fundraising. I mean, you know, it's got to be more challenging today than it was six months ago. And not just for the Parkinson's Association of Southwest Florida, but for all nonprofits, how are you getting the word out? And are, how is fundraising for you now? Well, this is typically the quieter season. Uh, and that we live in a community that's a snowbird community and the vast majority of fundraising takes place in the seasonal months. Uh, we are fundraising. We're looking at new ways to fundraise. Uh, we are planning to continue with our programming for the fall and for next year in hopes that we can return to normal. And if we can't, then we'll be investigating other ways to, to raise money. But it, it is a challenge uh, for all of us in the community, and especially as smaller nonprofits that don't have perhaps the reserves uh, that other nonprofits have or the, uh, the name recognition. So while Parkinson's disease is the fastest growing neurodegenerative disease in our community, and it's expected to 
exceed Parkin, excuse me, exceed Alzheimer's disease in the next 20 years. It is an aging disease related organization and oftentimes we're not thought of as the uh, sexy hot charities in town. Oh, yeah. And it's just, like I said, it's going to be difficult. So I, you mentioned that you're not part of a, a national association, it didn't sound like. Uh, where are you getting, so everything you're doing, you're coming up internally, are you coming, getting ideas on how to proceed with your online stuff from others or where is all the, the content coming from? Is it just strictly internal or, you, or is some, or are there other people out there actually providing a little bit of input? So all of our programming that we hold for the Parkinson's community is led by professionals. They are all paid to provide their services. So our movement instructors have been trained in Parkinson's movement and they are paid by the association to provide those classes. Uh, the same with speech therapy. Our support groups are partially led by peers and then by MSWs as well. Uh, so we want to make sure that our community has access to the finest therapies and programs to help people live well with the disease. And it's through our uh, ability to raise money that we're able to provide those services uh, in our community. So while that we live in a very affluent community and people have access to hire people one-on-one -on -one for, for some of the therapies and movement, we really advocate for group activity because uh, it's helpful for people to see the, how others are living well with this disease and you're not in it alone. Yeah. Now that uh, parts of the United States are opening up and we're, you're a, at least a phase, if not two phases ahead of us over here in Broward County, are, how is that going to impact what you guys are doing now? I, you know, I, I understand on the fundraising aspect, you may not be able to do the bigger events. But what about when it comes to dealing with your members? Uh, are you going to be able to start implementing some programs again? So, uh, again, what our plans are once we feel that it's safe to have activities in person, we will offer them in person also virtually. So those that are more comfortable staying at home or find it more convenient to stay at home will be able to access the programs via Zoom. And those that want to be in person who've been longing for uh, the interaction face-to-face -face, uh, in person will be able to join us uh, together as a group. The largest challenge though is most of our programs are held in space that has been donated to us in the community and senior living facilities. And I think it's highly unlikely that we will be back in senior living facilities uh, in the near future. And so our challenge now is to find places that will take groups of people for uh, limited fees, uh, because again, we wanna make sure that we're able to expand programming rather than spend money on rental fees to offer the programming. No doubt, I, 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 I agree with that. So across the board, not just with the Parkinson's Association of Southwest Florida, what do you think are some of the challenges that nonprofits are, are facing today? Well, I think we're, we're all challenged with that we don't know what the future is. Uh, so I think it would be much easier if we knew that COVID would behind, be, be behind us in several months or that there was a vaccine coming so that we could begin to plan for what our events and our programming looks like. Uh, it's very fluid. Uh, and I think that that's the key to being successful right now is that you need to be fluid and listen to the needs of the community that you're serving. So most of our community, even though we can be together in small groups, really wants to stay home still mm -hmm. because they realize that they are populations that are at high risk for contracting COVID-19. Uh, I, I agree. And that actually is, is a perfect little segue into, into the next thing I want to ask you is, when are you going to be comfortable in, in going back out and kind of like resuming your life? I mean, 
going to restaurants, going to bars or movie theaters and things like that. More so than just, I mean, I think most of us have gone out for walks and, and all honesty, I, we love going out for walks because there's nobody out and nature and the skies are clear and nature's beautiful. But what about the rest of it? When are you going to be comfortable actually going out and socializing? Well, so I would say I work with a team of really uh, brave women who we never stopped coming to work. Uh, so when many offices went on lockdown, we stayed open uh, for one-on-one -on -one counseling for our members who are in crisis and to continue the day-to-day -day business of our organization. So while I am not a person with Parkinson's disease or any other debilitating disease. For me, I've remained cautious, uh, but I am going out and doing more and more to build uh, immunity. Uh, but everyone needs to do what feels right for them as an individual. While some of our volunteers have begun, have started to come back to work in the office, some are not comfortable. And I think it's, it's a very personal decision uh, to resume life uh, at the pace that feels right for each individual. I, I agree. I mean, my wife, Fabiana, she is just dying to go get her nails done, but I don't think, <laughs> I don't think. <laughs> well, I will. So nail salons are open here. I have had my nails done. Uh, she has no desire to go back. We, we, we are actually going the opposite way. We, we really, enjoyed the the eight weeks nine weeks that we've been in uh isolation or you know and we can't see it changing for a while i had no desire to go back to the bars where we used to listen to live music and just be crammed in there you just there's too much of an unknown right now even with restaurants i mean there's just i mean I, i've got kids that work in restaurants there's just too much of an unknown of what's happening in those to for us to even think about it so we're, right. We're, and, and again, I think it is. It's one of those that people need to make the decision that's, that's right for, for them, for venturing out. Um, I think what's the most difficult is when I talk to our members to hear that they can't visit loved ones in uh, assisted or independent or skilled facilities. And that's a challenge. Uh, because again, the isolation with Parkinson's disease uh, is debilitating and then not to be able to see a, a family member. And we hear not just from those in facilities, but across the board for many, this has really taken the, a toll on people's mental health. And sadly, we've started to see uh, people have declined from COVID-19. And so some people have said they're going to go back out and live their life because this isn't the way they wanna live and others are being far more cautious and staying home isolating. But again, I think it's a very personal decision. I, I couldn't agree more. Uh, Linda, if anybody out there, because you're extremely knowledgeable in the nonprofits and of course in Parkinson's, uh, if anybody wanted to reach you to find out some information on Parkinson's or anything, how could they get in touch with you? So you can call our office. Our office is 239-417-3465. We are here to help you with resources, information, anything that's related to Parkinson's disease, other neurodegenerative diseases. And quite frankly, people call us for all different reasons and we're happy to help anyone regardless of their situation. Uh, so as an association, we can provide resources, help people get into movement disorder specialists, uh, help them if they need to see a therapist. We have a social worker on staff who sees our members or people in the community uh, to provide them with some counseling services. We also have a fund called the Urso Fund to help people that are struggling financially with paying their medical bills or their prescriptions or may need medical equipment or respite care. Uh, you can also look at our website uh, or sign up to be a member. There is no fee to be a member of our organization. And if you sign up as a member, then you'll receive the education programs and access to all of the programming that we're offering in the community. Perfect. Okay. I want to just say thank you very much. It really has been my honor to have you on. Uh, 
and I really think you brought a wealth of information uh, about the Parkinson's Association of Southwest Florida. And I just want to say thank you very much. Well, thank you for the opportunity. Stay safe and healthy. You too. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.